there are three different ways to perform a surgical cricothyrotomy. The first is the classical cricothyrotomy, the second is the rapid four-step cricothyrotomy, and the third is the bougie-assisted cricothyrotomy. The equipment for each technique is variable, but if you have a scalpel, a trach hook, a 6-0-E-T tube, a trousseau dilator, and a bougie, you can perform any of the different techniques. At the very minimal, I would recommend at least having a scalpel, a 6-0-E-T tube, and a bougie. The initial step for all three cricothyrotomy techniques is landmark identification. Um, and the landmark identification you do the same way with each different cricothyrotomy technique. I like to start from the sternal notch and I like to work my way up from there feeling my landmarks. So your first prominence going up from the sternal notch is going to be the cricoid cartilage. Above that you'll feel the thyroid cartilage and above that you may feel the hyoid bone. Your cut goes between the cricoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage. The reason I do not like to start from the top is that depending on the patient's anatomy you may feel the hyoid bone first or you may feel the thyroid cartilage and so this puts you at risk of doing an incision between the hyoid and the thyroid cartilage and therefore basically doing your crike in the wrong spot. Um, so once you've identified your landmarks, once you've identified the cricothyroid membrane between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, you make your incision. I recommend making a vertical incision over the membrane between the thyroid and the cricoid cartilage through the skin and some of the soft tissue. This incision is good because it allows you to extend upwards or downwards if you need to extend the incision. Once you have your skin incision, you can blunt dissect with your finger down to the cricothyroid membrane and you can make a horizontal incision across the cricothyroid membrane. You do it both directions with your scalpel across the membrane and the good news is that it is um, the, the way the cricoid cartilage is shaped, the, if you put your scalpel in too deep, you're not going to harm anything because there's a thick cartilaginous structure in the back of the airway at this point. So once you're in through the cricothyroid membrane, then you can use either of your techniques for doing the cricothyrotomy. The classic cricothyrotomy uses a trach hook and it grabs the inferior portion of the thyroid cartilage. Then you take your dilator and you dilate the soft tissue in the area and you subsequently place your endotracheal tube just beyond the balloon. For the rapid four-step technique, instead of using the trach hook to elevate the thyroid cartilage, you use the trach hook to elevate the cricoid cartilage inferiorly. You do not use the dilator, and you insert your endotracheal tube with just using the tracheal hook. Again, you insert it to just beyond the balloon. And then the final technique is the bougie-assisted technique. After you make your incision, you just take the bougie, the coudé portion pointing anteriorly and caudally, insert it through the cricothyroid membrane into the airway, feeling for the tracheal rings and also feeling for a holdup at the carina. It's important to note that the holdup for the carina occurs a lot earlier with the bougie in this technique than it does during orotracheal intubation. And that's because the carina is just so much closer. So once you feel the holdup of the carina, you put your ET tube over the bougie, as you would with a regular endotracheal intubation. And again, you insert the ET tube to just beyond the cuff. Once your endotracheal tube is in the airway, you inflate the cuff. 
you verify tube insertion into the airway using your bag valve mask and looking for color change and listening for breath sounds, making sure that you're not too deep. Um, and then the, the final step you can do is you can cut the ET tube just above the balloon apparatus, the balloon inflation apparatus, and trim the tube so that it's not sticking out as far as it is here. Then finally, when the clinical situation allows, you can contact ENT for urgent revision to a tracheostomy. So that is how you perform the three different types of emergent cricothyrotomies. Thank you.